some cars here. I'll do a quick little walkthrough. I, I hope to get inside. They uh, seem to be closed right now, but you can see we've got some of these really cool right-hand drive Mitsubishi. I think they're four by four and Toyota um, vans. So that's pretty cool. And uh, you can see there's a bunch of cool stuff back here. Gotta love the little side view mirror on the front. Now a lot of these look like they need some work, but man, look at these little Dahatsu or Suzuki trucks. Very cool. Yeah, I left a message, so hopefully I'll hear back shortly or I'll be, I might be passing through here in a couple days. I'll come back through and hopefully have uh, maybe a shot of some of the even nicer cars, I'm sure, that are on the inside. Man, I love these vans. How cool is that? Well, I see a some type of Skyline variant back here. I doubt it's a R32 or R33 or R34, else it would be inside. So it's probably one of the entry level cars. Well, they are Skylines, but I'm not an expert. Go listen to the Sean Morris interview I had a couple months ago uh, to hear what an expert has to say about these cars in his top 10. Because in his top 10, we had a few vans. I think even a station wagon or so. So, yeah, these are cute, small, really cute. The high jet. They're just different enough to make them fun. And these are really cool because I think they're typically four by fours, you know, and you got a little bed. It's small, gas powered, have it around the house or uh, around the farm or just for fun, drive it around the neighborhood. And then of course these with the big cars on front, four wheel drive, pretty cool. Hopefully I'll have more here in a second. If not, oh well. Okay, so I haven't seen the JDM guys. They haven't called me back yet. I'm not taking offense. So when you're in Southwestern Michigan, what do you need to do? You need to go to this place, the Gilmore Car Museum. Heritage Center, whatever. So I'm here on site only for like 20 minutes. So I'll see what I can get done. There is a herd of deer out in this field. So I'll see if I can get a video of the herd of deer. All right, see you inside. All right, so let's do a little walk through here. This is pretty cool, this Corvette 55. You do not see that top ever. Let's see, the removable hardtop is one of the most unique and rarest aftermarket accessories ever made from the early C1 Corvettes. Huh, interesting. Nice, beautiful car, I love the colors. I'm not typically a yellow guy unless it's pre-68 or so. Like I love the springtime yellow Mustangs. So this is apparently the Corvette room. Yeah, this would be the Corvette room. It's a nice 53. They have a very nice gift store. So there's 57 with the dual, the black and silver. And then you see 58, they went to the quad head headlights. Actually, what I love about this is you can see how they progressed and change throughout the years. And if you ever see an original 53, which this one definitely looks like an original 53, you can see with the light, see if you can see here, you can see the fiberglass weave because the paint was so thin. See, thank you for not touching. I did not touch. I love this color right here. Wow, that's beautiful. You've got the white cove, very nice. So there's a 62, this is a 58. You can see significant differences right here between the 62 and 58. 58 has got the, the three things in the side there and it's got the 
A lot of louvers on the hood. There's some changes in the back as well. 62 is much more cleaned up. And the biggest difference is the rear end looks a lot more like the Stingray. So you can see the rear end here. Here's the 58 rear end. And then look how much has changed between 58 and 62. And you can see the 62, which is the C1 generation, looks a lot like the 67 rear end, which is the C2 generation right next to it. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of a halvesies. It's a transitional year between the generations. It's a nice Shuley. I like this display here. Look at this. This is pretty cool. Oh well, look, built-in anti-dive control. I don't think that's very effective. And there's an anniversary Corvette, 40th anniversary. Now this is that Nomad prototype. Now, this is pretty cool, a couple prototypes. Here's a styling concept car. C1. Here's another prototype. Corvette Corvair. I always said the Corvair was underappreciated. Very beautiful car. This is a cool rear end. Huh. I like that. Okay, so this is a really cool rare car. I'm sure everybody's heard of a ZR1. Well, this is the rarer and more perf higher performance ZR2. So they only made these for one year in 1971. They only made 12 of them. And so it's pretty interesting. You can go back to my podcast called Performance Brand Origins, where I go a little bit more in depth about this car. It's interesting that the lesser performance car, the ZR1 is the one that is touted today, while no one really touts the ZR2. So the ZR1 back in the day had the LT1, I think it was a 350 cubic inch engine, small block. And the ZR2 actually had the big 454 engine. So a ZR2 would blow the doors off of a ZR1. And yet everybody knows the ZR1 today. I guess, you know, you always were number one, you know, with the ZR1. Uh, we're number one with the ZR2. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, look, an L88. It's a 69 LE8. This is a big dog car for sure. Uh, if you look at the LE8, it's a 67 version. They only made, I think, 20 of them. Those trade anywhere between 2.5 million and up over three and a half, four million dollars, depending on how rare, if it's a convertible, whatnot. They're a little cheaper, the later ones, but they're still a lot of money. Here we go. Recent sales have ranged between 500,000 to $1 million. I'm assuming for this generation, L88, the C3s, the earlier ones are more. All right, I'm gonna go on to the next few rooms. Apparently only uh, a couple of these buildings are open. All the ones outside, the barns elsewhere are closed until April the 1st, which makes me really sad. Okay, it looks like this next room has some big engines, the Franklin engines, and we're going back in time a little more. Now, I am not an expert in this era of cars. And these are a bunch of nameplates. I don't recognize like Olympic. We have Franklin's, another Franklin here. A big Franklin in the back there, beautiful. Another Franklin. All right, so a lot of Franklin's in here. <laughs> wow, look at this, very early Franklin, 1909. And you've got this big beauty here, 1931. Okay, a lot of Franklins. A 1905 Franklin. I'll get back to the muscle cars in a second. All right, let's see where this goes. We got some type of chassis here. I'm gonna guess it's a Franklin. Oh no, this is a Lincoln chassis. Wow, look at this thing. Okay, so we're coming into the Lincoln room. 
There is a lot to see in this place. Oh, look at the big engine over there. All right, which way to go here? Let's start with some of the old. We definitely have some of the new over here. All right, I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough. Big convertible. I love this blue one here, this 39. Look at that. Now, what's really interesting about Lincolns today is the one straight ahead, these Continental convertibles, they are really soft right now. Like in, let's say, number two shape. You know, it's a $40,000 car. A V12 front engine. Now, this one is probably, oh, that's a Lincoln Zephyr. So, that's definitely a higher price car, probably around $100,000. But beautiful. Wow. Nice brown 70s car. If I have a 70s car, I would love for it to be in the 70s colors. Big Continental from 1960. Now this is an iconic one right here. Nice Continental. All right. Good smattering of Lincolns through here across the ages. They've got the classic Continental convertible with the suicide door, so four door. Now would that be called a Phaeton? Got the suicide door, which is great. Some of the new cars and you can see out here these are the other buildings that are not open right now so you really have to plan your day that old gas station over there they even have a muscle car dealership so i believe it's oh yeah it's the brick building over here i think that's what it is which i don't believe is open today yeah look at this ford dealer made to look like a dealership from the 60s and uh, I don't know if there's cars in there yet or not I know it's fairly new all right let's go into the muscle cars okay I'm a Shelby guy Mustang guy and this is pretty cool this is the you can see it up top there it says the one and only 1967 Shelby convertible they only made one this is it it was actually dressed up as a 1968 car at some point Mostly to test the convertible aspect of it, see what it would look like, but it was actually a 1967. So these center headlights were outlawed by California, so they moved to the outer parts later. So if you see real center headlights uh, on a Shelby, it means it's an early production car. Here's another one. So this is a prototype car. Interesting. Beautiful. I think the 67 is probably the prettiest of all the Shelby's. All right, so we've got some Mopars in here. This is a pretty rare factory option with the hood that you lift off like that. Oh, I've got a gorgeous TTO. Boss 429. Might have to mute that. All right, I got a Hemi, beautiful color on the Hemi. Just do a quick walk through. I'm a huge AMX fan, but they're cool. Let's see, back of the boss. Here's a 62 409 Impala. You can tell it's a 62 because it's the first year of this body style. Also, they have the badges up here in 63. It moved back over there. And if it only has the V, if it doesn't have anything, it's a six cylinder. If it only has the V, it's a 283 cubic inch car. If it has the V and the flags, it's a 327 cubic inch car. And then obviously if it says 409, it's a 409 cubic inch car. Got a nice Charger Daytona. Love the big wing cars. Very nice setup. So along with the Ford dealership, there's a Cadillac one here. Looks like an old dealership. And apparently this one is open. All right, so we're gonna see if that is correct or not. 
I like what I see already. All right, let's see. Hey. Oh, nice. Start off with a 1903. 62 Cadillac, 55. 50 right here, 37. Ooh, I like this. This is cool. Love the blue color on this four door 61. Nice. Look at this 59. Ooh, that's nice. Coupe de Ville. Now this 87, that's kind of nuts. This is the one I grew up with. And what's interesting is this part would always, you can tell they've replaced it here. Or maybe it's original, just this colored, but this is plastic. This is metal. That plastic usually fails. Gotta love the TV antenna. All right, I'm looking for a Barritz so far. Oh, so far I don't see a Barritz. Now I do see a Brome right here. Nice. So Bromes were four doors and extremely high end. You can see it's got the stainless steel roof. Suicide door, so you, you can see how you open them. You can actually double door them, open them. Great interior, they actually come with shot glasses. So you can drink while you drive. <laughs> I do not endorse that. The 76 Cadillac is the Bicentennial Edition. Uh, sold, I sold one of these at Auburn last year. And what was amazing is all the cars I had, I think 13 or 14 cars in the sale, they only made 200 of these. I got the most inquiries about that Bicentennial car. I had at least 10 calls on it and they weren't collectors. The guys I talked to just remember these cars from their childhood and they wanted to uh, buy one to drive it. And the one I sold was all original, 9,000 miles on it. And it sold for, I don't think it was a record price, but it was close. It sold for $77,000. You can see a lot of custom touches. You can see that gold plaque on the dash there. It says what number it is out of the 200. And again, this is susceptible to damage. And on these cars, it looks like this whole front here is all plastic discoloration all right let's see what number this is i'm curious uh actually that does not say i am not correct i thought i actually gave a number it is one of the last 200 produced that's all it says oh i should have looked at the window sticker now i also grew up with these not the best all right Window sticker, $12,745 back in the day. So this one, 12, 12 miles per gallon in the city. Now this one, I can't tell the mileage. All right, this one looks like it has a, hundred, a little over a thousand miles. I do know where there's one that only has 70 miles on it, which is kind of crazy. So I love the setup here. Okay, I'm not the first to admit I'm not always the smartest guy in the world, but I just realized I went through the Franklin building. While well, it looks like old Franklin dealership, I went through the Lincoln collection. Looks like an old Lincoln dealership. I just had to turn around and see that. So really cool. You can see how massive this place is. Now, if I remember in that barn there, that's where you have the 30s Duesenbergs and Mercedes cars that are just unbelievable. Because I remember last time I was here walking upstairs I was like, how'd they get these cars upstairs? Now I see the big ramp. So, super cool. We'll see if there's anything else to see as I head out of here. Okay, this is kind of exciting. This is the Fonz from my childhood, his motorcycle. So that's pretty cool. Neat to see. All right, thanks for joining me for that 
brief tour and I was wrong about the Ford dealership. I just met with Josh, who's like the executive director here. And that is the Model T building, which was open, but I didn't want to go all the way back over there. I'll catch that later. And they are building a 60s muscle car dealership. So I'm driving over here. There was a herd of deer over here earlier, but I don't see him right now, darn it. Okay, anyways, thanks for joining me. Be sure to check out the podcast every Thursday. Bye.